A Democratic candidate a lot of Republicans have an affection for is Tulsi Gabbard, and it's easy to see why. Like Pete Buttigieg, she served our country in the military. Tulsi has been less than strident than the worst elements of the Democrats, even voting present on the impeachment vote. And she's been brutally effective at challenging the worst personalities in the Democratic Party, whether it's her epic takedowns of Hillary Clinton or Kamala Harris, who it could be argued was driven out of the race by Tulsi's critique this fall. And then there's just the fact that she seems more authentic and individual, with her cute ukulele duets with her husband and surfing on the shores of New Hampshire. But before Republicans get too carried away, let me tell you some things about Tulsi Gabbard that should make her fans in the Republican Party cool their crush a little. Tulsi Gabbard wants Medicare for all under a single-payer system. She has a climate change plan to end fossil fuel emissions. It's called the OFF Act. According to her plan, she's going to transition the U.S. to 100% clean and renewable energy by 2035. She is pro-choice, with the third trimester being the cutoff. She wants to implement a $15 minimum wage and free college. Regarding impeachment, Tulsi Gabbard voted present for the impeachment vote, not because she thinks Trump is innocent. She said, I believe President Trump is guilty of wrongdoing. She couldn't stand behind impeaching the president because, in her words, removal of a sitting president must not be the culmination of a partisan process fooled by tribal animosities that have so gravely divided our country. I believe she realizes that coming off as extreme might not work to win the election. So she's going to appeal to Trump supporters through a middle-of-the-road attitude. One key thing you will always hear from Tulsi Gabbard is that we need to stop regime change wars. Yet she's a bit of a hypocrite on the war issue. She believed we needed to pull out of Syria. But when Donald Trump started bringing the troops out, she said he had the blood of the Kurds on his hands. Tulsi said that when it comes to war against terrorists, she's a hawk. Yet, after Trump had the terrorist Hassem Soleimani taken out, she said, I just came from the intelligence briefing that the administration came and brought to Congress. Really, they provided vague comments, no justification whatsoever for the illegal and unconstitutional act of war that President Trump took. She also had an interesting perspective about the Ukrainian airliner that crashed last week. Pete Buttigieg shot out a tweet with regard to this airline that was shot out of the sky in Ukraine. He said, innocent civilians are now dead because they were caught in the middle of an unnecessary and unwanted military tit for tat. My thoughts are with the families and loved ones of all the 176 souls lost aboard this flight. He's come under a lot of heat by a lot of different people. Ted Cruz says, you're wrong. They were shot down by Iran. What do you make of the comment that he said there? I think this is a very, very unfortunate incident that's affected so many people and so many families. But this is one of these consequences of this escalation and this state of war that we are in. Uh, having a foresight and being able to look at what the consequences are of going to war with Iran, I think, is a serious thing and a responsibility of the president commander in chief that are I think you, he and his administration do, do, do have I not read looked that, at. Are you agreeing with Buttigieg on a comment based on that answer there? Uh, my point is that this is a very unfortunate consequence of this escalation of war. But it was Iran who owned the anti-aircraft missiles. It was their system that went uh, off when this airline to, are, are, are you implying that they did this intentionally? I, I did not say that at all. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the inference here is that Iran is responsible for this and not this, the tit for tat. This, this, no, no, this, this, is, this is the consequence of this escalation of war that we need, that, that further points to why we need to de-escalate these tensions now. And I urge President Trump to do so, to get back to the negotiating table and make sure that this war no longer continues to move forward. So we are at war with Iran, and the missile that hit the plane is just a consequence of the escalation of war? Why couldn't she just come out and say that it was Iran's fault? They are responsible for an attack, an act of terrorism in which 176 people died. Even the people of Iran have been protesting their government over the plane crash, calling out death to the dictator. Also, Tulsi is the kind of person to get herself on board with Ilan Omar. 
She voted for a bill that condemned the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement against Israel as being anti-Semitic. And then a week later, she supported Ilan Omar's bill, which affirms that Americans have the right to boycott foreign countries to advance human rights, which in the words of Ilan Omar, would be an opportunity for us to explain why it is that we support a non-violent movement, which is the BDS movement. Also, I should note that Tulsi Gabbard was unwilling to call out Omar's anti-Semitism. And remember the Iran nuclear deal, otherwise called the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the one where we gave billions of dollars to Iran and where there were loopholes which allowed the country to work on its nuclear weapons? Well, Tulsi Gabbard wants us to re-enter into that farce of a deal. Tulsi tries to portray herself as different from the Democratic PAC these days, but she is a hardcore leftist. What I like about President Trump's foreign policy is that it seems to put America first, and it's business-oriented. He's made it clear that he doesn't want wars, but he's willing to step up to dictators, fight to protect American lives, and deal with terrorist leaders who are behind planned attacks on our embassies. To get a glimpse of what could be brilliance, let's take a look at another highlighted feature of his foreign policy. We're sending more to Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia is paying us for it. You know, we're doing something that nobody's ever done. I said to Saudi Arabia, we have a very good relationship with Saudi Arabia. I said, listen, you're a very rich country. You want more troops? I'm going to send them to you, but you've got to pay us. They're paying us. They've already deposited $1 billion in the bank. We are going to help them, but these rich countries have to pay for it. South Korea gave us $500 million. They never gave us any. They gave us $500 million. I said, you've got to help us along. We have 32,000 soldiers in South Korea protecting you from North Korea. You've got to pay. And they gave us $500 million. I mean, you sort of have breaking news because nobody wants to report that stuff. I'm not sure anybody knows it. I might be sort of saying it. You have some. I mean, it's good stuff. But they're a wealthy country. They build all your television sets. They took that away from us. They build the ships. They build a lot of things. I said, look, we're protecting you. You got to pay. They paid us $500 million. They're going to pay us a lot more. So we are now getting paid to protect people. No more spending our own money on countries that are oil wealthy, that are oil rich. No more letting countries free ride off of American help. No more precious American lives being taken in vain because of bad military strategy from political leaders. That's what President Trump represents to many American people. I'm Abigail Hammond for Rebel News. Like and subscribe to never miss a video.